What's up power users, it's Extreme here, back with another video. If you haven't seen my previous rant video, you can check that out here. I didn't go into the details much on the new Intel Alder Lake CPU architecture, mainly because there's already YouTube videos out there that do just that. However, I do want to cover one detail in particular, and that's PCI Express Gen 5. So stick around, we're gonna get into all kinds of trouble. Roll that beautiful intro. Hello? Hello? You there? Hello? What's up guys? We're back. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that bell to get all my extreme video notifications. A couple of days ago, Intel announced the new Alder Lake chip with features such as DDR5 and PCI Express Gen 5. That is what I want to highlight in this video, the PCI Express Gen 5. AMD also announced generational support for their new upcoming platform but that's not coming out until next spring. I want to ask two basic questions. Is it worth the cost of admission to upgrade if you currently have Ryzen or 10th and 11th gen Intel CPUs? And second, what is the gaming performance, if any at all? We currently find ourselves in quite the pickle. So let's get into it. It wasn't but two years ago that AMD introduced the world to Gen, Gen 4 support with their latest 3000 series chip on their X570 platform. We can see that on the Wikipedia page. Right here, July 2019, X570. 3000 series chipset. Fast forward to today. It wasn't but six months ago that Intel announced PCI Express Gen 4 for their 11th gen CPU architecture. That was six months ago. AMD two years ago. Now we're getting word that on November 4, Intel is going to release PCI Express 5. But in order to answer the question, and we're going to start with the second question. What does that do to gaming performance? Do I get any sort of benefit from gaming? Do I add frames per second? We're gamers. So if we take a look at some benchmarks between Generation 3 in generation four, what do you think that's going to tell us? Let's head over to this tab here. Tech spot. PCIe4 versus PCIe3. GPU benchmark. Using the RTX 3080. Interesting details. Death stranding. Very high quality. At 1080p. No difference. No difference between 4 and 3. 1440p. We see a 2 frame difference. 4K. We see another 2 frame difference. Next game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Highest quality. 1080p. 2 frame difference. 1440p. No difference. 4K. No difference. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. We see a 10 frame difference. But are you actually going to see that? You're already spitting out 440 frames per second. On average. 352 on average. 1440p. 3 frame difference. Ah, we don't like that game. Horizon Zero Dawn, one frame difference. 
I mean, you're starting to see the point here. There is no benefit to upgrade from three to four. No, nothing in real world performance. Now, we're not talking the M.2 slot. We're talking strictly GPU gaming performance in frames per second. I get it. The M.2 slot, the storage, it's a double benefit. I get it. But gaming performance, that's what we're after. Now, let's look at what PCIe 5 gives us. Details. They're not going to show us any benchmarks for gaming, but we can look at details. Some details that have been revealed. Like the power connector. A couple years ago, there was a rumor that this power connector was going to be on the motherboard. Completely eliminating the need for a connector on the card. Which I thought was a cool, cool idea. Power everything through the PCI Express bus right into the card. However, these latest reports don't seem to jive with that rumor. This connector is right on the card, according to this. Adds up to 600 watts of power to the card. It's a 16 pin connector. Interesting. Now, we can take a look at this tab here. Asus reveals the PCIe Gen 5 power connector first seen in the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti leak. Right there. It is on the card. Interesting. I'm not really a, a big fan of these connectors on the cards. However, back to the first question. What is the cost for admission. If you're not getting real world gaming performance, does it even make sense to upgrade? If you're in the market for a new PC, okay, maybe, but it's going to cost you new motherboard, possibly new RAM if you want to take advantage of DDR5, new graphics card, and new CPU. That's a complete platform. New. If you currently have last gens, wh why would we upgrade? Latest and greatest, blah, 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 blah. No. Let's take a look at 10th gen CPU versus 11th gen. If you're in the market to build new, let, let's, let's see what it's going to cost us. Okay, and I'm not really a huge fan of the price to performance ratio right now with AMD. They're kind of pricey. So let's stick to let's stick to Intel with this diagnosis, and we're gonna go to PC Part Picker. I'm gonna try and do something here. Let's slide this over here. We're gonna come over, and grab this. There. Let's see if we can do this. On the left hand side, we're going to go 10th gen. Let's look at the 10400. Okay? 10400 F 153. On the right hand side, let's take a look at the 11400 F 269. Can you see that? 269 right down here 153 that's a hundred dollar difference okay hundred dollar difference between the two generations PCI Express 3 PCI Express 4 support now let's add a motherboard we're gonna go with the B460 wait B450 no. B460. 
D460. Why? Why can't I do that? Chipset. Come on. What are you doing? Z, Z. There's no. Why can't I do that? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Z490. Z560. Why can't I do Z460? Okay, let's go to Amazon. B four sixty motherboard. So we have this here B four sixty M gigabyte ninety six dollars. We're gonna go over here. Let's see if we can find it over here. Motherboard B five sixty M gigabyte. B560M DS3H B460M DS3H It's $97 This is $109 Can you see that? Do I need to go right there? $109 right there Interesting So this system Let's go back Let's get rid of this No. What'd it do? Alright. It, it saved my cash. So, but, but you're getting the point. You can save $100, $120, $150 by going with a 10th gen rather than an 11th gen. Even so, you're talking a massive upgrade, probably tons of cost to upgrade to the 12th gen doesn't make any sense to me with no benefit whatsoever to gaming performance sure you get a sweet new little power connector but that means nothing that does no I don't care about that you're not getting any more frames per second makes zero sense to me so do what you feel most comfortable my opinion is not to upgrade. Stick with the 10th gen. But you do you, boo. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. We talk truth here. We ask the hard questions. And hit that bell to get all my extreme video notifications. Thank you. Extreme out.